Good morning, everyone. We are now in the sixth Sunday of Easter. Time is moving on. And the theme this morning is abiding in Christ as he abides in the Father. This is a season of rest. This is a season of restoration. This is a season of healing. And so we come. We come to the feet of Jesus and we just sit. We don't need to do, we just need to sit in his presence and receive what he means to give us. All we need to do is receive it and be blessed by it. So our challenge, yours and mine is, can we sit in his quiet? Can we be still and know that he is God? May his hand of blessing rest upon each and every one. And may we be transformed by this time. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. And now as we come before God with reverent and contrite hearts, let us bend our knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite good may, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my word. My Father will love you and we will come to you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you above all things may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can ever desire through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen
Okay. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And Marie? Yeah, I was trying to push the mute button. Okay. This, today's reading is from Acts 17, verses 22 to 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Appians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God, what therefore you worship, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortal life, breath, and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. In him, though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands, commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a date on which he will have the world judge in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Psalm is Psalm 66, verses seven to 18. In his great and mighty power, he rules forever, watching over every movement of every nation. So beware, rebel lands. He knows how to humble you. Pause in his presence. Praise God, all you peoples. Praise him everywhere and let everyone know you love him. There's no doubt about it. God holds our lives safely in his hands. He's the one who keeps us faithfully following him. Oh Lord, we have passed through your fire like precious metal made pure. You've proved us, perfected us, made us holy. You've captured us and snared us in your net. Then like prisoners, you place chains around our necks. You've allowed our enemies to prevail against us. Yet we've passed through fire and flood. Yet in the end, you always bring us out better than we were before, saturated with your goodness. I come before your presence with my sacrifice. I'll give you all that I've promised, everything that I have. When I was overcome in my anguish, I promised to give you my sacrifice. Here it is. All that I said I would offer you is yours. The best I have to bring 
I'll throw it all into the fire as the fragrance of my sacrifice ascends unto you. Pause in his presence. All you lovers of God who want to please him, come and listen, and I'll tell you what he did for me. I cried aloud to him with all my heart, and he answered me. Now my mouth overflows with the highest praise. Yet if I had closed my eyes to my sin, the Lord God would have closed his ears to my prayer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Peter 3, verses 13 to 22. Persecuted for doing good. Why would anyone harm you if you're passionate and devoted to pleasing God? But even if you happen to suffer for doing what is right, you will have the joyful experience of the blessing of God. And don't be intimidated or terrified by those who would terrify you. But give reverent honor in your hearts to the Anointed One and treat Him as the Holy Master of your lives. And if anyone asks about the hope living within you, always be ready to explain your faith with gentleness and respect. Maintain a clean conscience so that those who slander you for living a pure life in Christ will have to lie about you and will be ashamed because of their slander. For it is better to suffer for doing good if it is in God's plan than for doing evil. Christ's Victory Christ suffered and died for sins once and for all, the innocent for the guilty, to bring you near to God by his body being put to death and by raised to life by the Spirit. He went in the spiritual realm and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison because of the disobedience of long ago. For during the time of Noah, God patiently waited while the ark was being prepared, but only a few were brought safely through the floodwaters, a total of eight souls. This was a prophetic picture of the immersion that now saves you, not a bathing of the physical body, but rather the response of a good conscience before God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is now in heaven at the place of a, a supreme authority next to God. The very powers of heaven, including every angel and authority, now yield in submission to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I am down and all oh, my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burden me then, then i am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so impatiently. But then you come and I am filled with wonder. Sometimes I think I miss eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up. 
to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountain. You raise me up so I can stand on I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up to more than I can be. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prophesies about the Holy Spirit. Loving me empowers you to obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Savior, the Holy Spirit of truth, who will be to you a friend just like me, and he will never leave you. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him. But you will know him intimately because he will make his home in you and will live inside you. I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans. I will come back to you. Soon I will leave this world and they will see me no longer. But you will see me because I will live again and you will come alive too. So when that day comes, you will know that I'm living in the Father and that you are one with me, for I will be living in you. Those who truly love me are those who obey my commands. Whoever passionately loves me will be passionately loved by my Father and I will passionately love you in return and will manifest my life within you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We now bring before the Lord our prayers and thanksgivings. Let us take a moment of silence to become aware of his presence in our hearts. Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, you told your disciples that you would never leave us. Thank you for being within each one of us now, as we are in you. After each prayer we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world as it struggles to cope with the pandemic. We thank you that governments and scientists from many nations are cooperating to find solutions. Give the leaders knowledge of you and guide them in their decisions and motives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole church, that it will be led by your spirit of truth, and that during this crisis, it will become a stronghold of faith and a source of comfort for all believers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for St. Andrew, for Reverend Kim, for Reverend Pam, for Sheila, our youth leader, for Mark, our music minister, and for all the members of our congregation. We thank you for the technology that allows us to continue to worship you together in our homes. We pray for all those who are not able to join us in this way. Comfort them, O Lord, and bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, whether in body or mind, whether struck by COVID-19 or any other illness. We pray for those who have lost their incomes due to the crisis 
and don't know what the road ahead will look like. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own families, especially for any dear ones who have lost faith and gone astray and closed their hearts to you. Please take a minute now to think of anyone who is on your mind in particular. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, as governments start to ease the restrictions and allow us the freedom of going outside and meeting again, we ask you to keep us safe. Grant that we will soon be free to worship together again in church and to partake of Holy Communion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We present all these prayers and petitions to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God of glory, accept all we offer you this day and bring us to that eternal city of love and light where Christ is King. We ask this in his name. Amen. Our Father who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank you for your ongoing support of your church. Thank you for your emails, for your offerings, for your phone calls, and for your prayer requests. Thank you for your love and your care for one another. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he watch over you and protect you. May he guide you all the days of your life so that you may walk in his ways to the glory of his name and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love here and in the hereafter forever and ever. Amen. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save our Queen. Send her victoria, happy and glorious.